this video, we're going to make a playable sequencer in Pure Data. Now that we went through sound synthesis on this channel, we can start learning about algorithmic composition. And I believe that making a sequencer will be a fun and informative way to get started on patching algorithms. So what we're going to build is an 8-step sequencer. We can think of it as one measure of 8 eighth notes. Before we start patching, I'm going to quickly go over the three main components of this patcher. This part is the main clock of the sequencer. When we turn on this toggle object, this number object will increment by 1 every 375 milliseconds. And we can of course change the tempo. And this number object resets back to 1 after reaching 8. And it loops for all eternity until we turn off the toggle object. Here are 8 select objects. Each one outputs a bang when the input number matches with the argument. What that means is, as we can see for example, when this number object is at 1, the select object with 1 as the argument will output a bang. And the other select objects will not output anything. These are send objects. It'll send its input to a receive object with the same name. So when we send a bang message to this send1 object, the receive1 object will output that bang message as we can see here. Using the send and receive objects will help the patcher look clean, but please don't overuse them because they'll make the process of debugging confusing. The next main component is the playable sequencer. We can think of this spaghetti object as a gate. When this toggle object is on, the gate is open and will let the bang message go through. For example, when we have this toggle object on, the bang will go through and it'll bang this button on the other side which will trigger the kick drum sample. When the toggle object is off, the gate will close and the bang message will not go through and the note will not play. So what we have here is an 8-step sequencer and we can choose which notes will play. And the last component is for sound. We have a receive object that is linked to the sequencer from earlier. And this button will trigger the audio sample. Okay, now that we know what we're building, we can start patching. Let's start with this clock. This section right here is the counter. When it receives a bang, it'll increment the number by 1, as we can see here when we turn on the toggle object connected to the metro object. The number will continue to increment until we turn off the toggle, which will trigger this button here that'll reset the counter to negative 1. This percent sign is called a modulus object. It's not an exaggeration to say that this is the heart of this entire patcher. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time learning about it in this video. You'll definitely find it useful when you start making generative patchers. Modulo is the remainder after dividing one number by another number. For example, let's try 15 divided by 8. The answer to that is 1 with a remainder of 7. So when we type 15 here, it will output 7. For inputs under 8, the output will be the same number as the input. For example, 4 divided by 8 is 0, with the remainder of 4. So, by using modulus 8, we can have a looping sequence of 1 through 8. Let's take a closer look to see what that means. When we turn on the toggle and the first bang message is sent out, we start with 0 in this counter right here. 0 divided by 8 is 0, with the remainder of 0. And we add 1 to that. So this number object right here will be 1, which will trigger this select object 1 right here. And it goes on like that until the counter reaches 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1, with 0 remainder. 0 plus 1 will equal 1. So the sequence goes back to 1. 9 divided by 8 is 1, with a remainder of 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And it'll increment like that until we reach 16. And the sequence goes back to 1 again. Therefore, the sequence resets to 1 for every division of 8. 
It's a good idea to mess around with this number object right here to better understand what's going on. A good way to test your understanding is to make a 16-step sequencer. Give it a try. Let's move on to the second main component. Think of these as individual gates that'll let through the bang message or not depending on the toggle state. Then the bang message will be sent here and it'll trigger the audio file. This message object is for the readSF tilde object, which will read and play an audio sample. The message object says open the name of the audio file, comma, and the number one. The audio file should be saved in the same folder of dispatcher like this. And that's pretty much it for this sequencer. What we can do next is to copy and paste and have three more sequencers. One for snare, another for cymbal, and the third one for hi-hat. And now we got ourselves a four voice step sequencer. The next step would be to make this a generative sequencer. For example, we can patch it in a way to have the sequencer change to random patterns every four measures. I'll make a tutorial on that for next week, so stay tuned. You can also use synthesizers instead of samples. Please feel free to combine all the patches from previous tutorials into this new patcher and experiment. Maybe each of these can be a different note for an FM synth or something along that line. Go experiment, make music, and have fun. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.